The emperor immediately praised his nephew. Very good. He thought to himself, Fang Juwua is very eager to meet his disciple again. Then, a man in a blue robe came to inform Guang Baodong that the emperor has ordered you to personally go to Tian Xin port to welcome the Zijing ship. Currently, there is still that insulting phrase on the ship. Guang Baodong, you will become the most famous person in the country. Just wait and see. Guang Baodong had cried like a river since the day the emperor was watching the youth Zijing. Next, he seemed to go mad. Who am I? Where is this? What are you doing? A few days later, the ship finally docked. Fang Jiwuo ran out, calling loudly, My disciple Zi Jing. Zi Jing, tears streaming down his face, shouted, My teacher Fang Jiwuo. Suddenly, Zi Jing wanted to hug Fang Jiwuo after so many days apart. Fang Jiwuo's face turned as green as a banana leaf, horrified and unsure where this damn kid learned such a ritual of kissing. He wanted to kick that boy but no one else was laughing secretly except for Liang Dai. Hey, the Franzi people have a very special greeting ritual. First, they must kiss each other to show their close affection. A little while later, at the Tian Xin port reception hall, Zi Jing and Fang Juwua together bowed and said, Long live the emperor. Zi Jing said, I have a precious item that I would like to present to the emperor for consideration. The emperor thought to himself, This Di Jing, Upon meeting me, his first reaction is not to complain about the hardships at sea, but to want to give me something. This makes me feel very pleased. Zi Jing then took out an object, saying, This is the relic of Unit Zheng He that you found in So Suma. The emperor picked it up to take a look and felt a bit suspicious. This is over a hundred years old. How come the paper looks so new? This paper is still from the Ming Dynasty. Zi Jing explained, this map was originally drawn on sheepskin, but had been heavily damaged. I have redrawn and colored it to make it suitable. Unit Zheng, he dedicated his entire life to marking all the countries in the world and the special characteristics of different nations, which he intended to present to the imperial court. After reviewing it, the emperor joyfully said, This is indeed a precious item. This world is so vast. Our Ming Dynasty is just a small part of it. Suddenly, the emperor asked in surprise, Where is this place? Fang Juwua immediately replied, This is a piece of land in the far western region, a fertile place that has a type of seed that can yield thousands of pounds of grain per acre, and also great animals that can provide thousands of pounds of meat each year. Fang Juwua secretly thought, This is indeed New York City of the USA. Later, the emperor asked again, is this the amazing country you mentioned before? Fang Juwa answered, Yes, your majesty. Even Unit Zheng he has specially marked the location of this country. The emperor asked in surprise, Why has he never mentioned it? Fang Juwa recounted, At that time, the grand ministers opposed Unit Zheng he who held power. Furthermore, the emperor back then had passed away, and the new emperor was not very interested in western expeditions. Unit Zheng, he also could not sail westward. At that time, only about three kilograms of rice could be harvested from one acre of land. Unit Zheng, he told everyone that there were seeds with a yield of up to 10,000 kilograms per acre. But no one believed him. Fang Juhua continued. They believed that Unit Zheng he only wanted the Ming Dynasty to continue wasting money and food on voyages to the west. So they intentionally lied to them. They even accused Unit Zheng he of deception and wanted to execute him. The emperor realized that Zheng he knew the imperial court could not find this miraculous seed, so to prevent the imperial court from thinking about it anymore, he deliberately left this map abroad. At this moment, the two grand ministers were speaking to each other. If the journeys to the west continue, the people will no longer have to worry about food. What a prosperous era that would be! The emperor suddenly exclaimed, The fleet of Zi Jing has successfully set sail for the first time. Our Ming Dynasty will set sail for the second, the third, and then the fourth time, until we find that miraculous seed. Now, quickly copy and distribute this map. Furthermore, I command all institutions to hang it up. I want all officials to know that our Ming Dynasty values this matter greatly and will do everything possible to find that miraculous seed. All the officials immediately clasped their hands and complied with the Emperor's order. The Emperor then turned to instruct. Crown Prince, you must remember, even if one day I die, 
and you take over to govern the country, you must not interrupt the exploration of the West. Do not let the tragedy of Yuna Zhenghi in history repeat itself once more. The crown prince clasped his hands in obedience to his father. Zi Jing suddenly excitedly said, Your Majesty, after I went to sea, I not only found the map of Yuna Zhenghi, but also discovered numerous precious treasures from around the world. Here is a pearl, here is an ivory, and here is coral. These treasures were presented by the leaders of various countries as gifts to your majesty, wishing you longevity and abundant health. The emperor looked at the mountain of glittering treasures before him, unable to contain his delight to the point of drooling. The two grand ministers beside him were utterly astonished, not expecting that the West held such valuable treasures. Zi Jing continued, I returned with envoys from 47 different countries. They admire the kindness of your majesty and have come here to pay their respects. They are willing to maintain a good relationship with our Ming dynasty and promise to assist us whenever needed. The emperor exclaimed in amazement, Oh, I did not expect that there would be as many as 47 envoys from different countries coming here. The officials were extremely delighted, praising Zi Jing. Indeed, you are impressive. Our Ming dynasty has truly received great fortune this time. Thanks to his outstanding achievements, Zi Jing soared high like a rocket, moving up from a level 7 scholar who had garnered little attention, to a third-rank official with a lengthy title, deputy prosecutor of the imperial court responsible for the royal censorship and an envoy of the royal to the sea, in charge of voyages to the west. After stepping outside, Zi Jing turned to his teacher, Fang Jiuwa, saying, You really are a master of deception. Just as you predicted, the emperor did not realize that the map was fake. Fang Jiuwa sneered with great satisfaction. It turned out that he had previously used his memory to redraw the map, then instructed Zi Jin, Hand this to the emperor, saying it is the map of Yunich Zhengki. Rest assured, I am doing this not for any malicious intent. At that moment, Fang Juwua felt invigorated, overflowing with pride and contentment. He spoke with great enthusiasm. With this map, the journey to the west will face no more obstacles. Our Ming dynasty will cooperate with the distant West and become increasingly powerful. After that, Zi Jing introduced Fang Jua. This is Liang Dai, from the country of Franzi. He is here to engage in maritime trade. Fang Jua was taken aback when he saw the man hurriedly puckering his lips, wanting to be overly familiar with him. Fang Jua immediately grabbed him, pulling him away as if he were really in a fish, and scolded, You damn fool! Do you dare to teach my students such bizarre greeting rituals? Liang Dai tearfully addressed the Ming Dynasty. I mean no harm. I just wish to meet the Emperor of the Ming Dynasty and hope that Fang Juwu can introduce me to him. For a long time, I have heard that the Emperor of the Ming Dynasty is kind and talented. His reputation has spread throughout the West, and we in Franzi greatly admire him. I hope the Emperor of the Ming Dynasty will grant us a region where our merchants can conduct trade with the Ming Dynasty. Upon hearing this, Fang Juwua threw his arm around the man's shoulders and said, Our emperor of the Ming Dynasty is truly benevolent. However, he has a small wish, which is to hire you and a group of craftsmen from Franzi to build a series of ships. What do you think about this? Leon Dai listened and immediately realized this was a bad deal. His face froze in embarrassment. Zi Jing stood to the side silently sympathizing with Liang Dai. Meeting Fang Jiuguo is unfortunate for you. In reality, the country of Franzi is the Iberian Peninsula. Currently, most of this peninsula's area is the territory of Spain, with a small part belonging to Portugal. Liang Dai, where he lives, is located in Portuguese territory. Faced with the mighty and powerful Spain, the Portuguese do not engage in direct combat to reclaim land. Instead, they focus on developing the country by exploiting resources at sea. Therefore, their shipbuilding skills rank second to none. At this moment, Liang Dai's face contorted, and he said, I cannot accept this, because the people accompanying me are all ship repairers, not skilled shipbuilders. He also thought to himself, I am not foolish enough to work without pay. Although I have the best shipbuilders, my only goal is to make money. But Fang Juwuo was reading the old man like a book. He immediately took out a large sack of gold and asked, Do you have Shi Jing Dong gold? For one boat, I will pay you one kilogram of gold. What do you think? Old Leong Dai couldn't believe his ears. What then did I hear that right? He never expected to encounter such a wealthy person. 
Fang Jiwuwa continued. You and Zi Jing are friends, so I will pay you three kilograms of gold for one boat, okay? Upon hearing this, Liang Dai began to fantasize about a scene where he was lying on a pile of gold, surrounded by beautiful girls. Three kilograms of gold would be enough for him to live a life of luxury until the end of his days. But suddenly, his patriotic spirit surged. I am a Franzi man, and I would rather die than sell the secrets of boatmaking of the Franzi nation. Fang Jiwa suddenly held up three fingers, indicating, What about if I add three more kilograms? Old Liang Dai immediately screamed, Okay, I agree. Fang Jiwua, you are a damned guy. Indeed, it was helpless with this man. Patriotism at noon. But in the afternoon, he changed his mind. Then he awkwardly said, The boat builders of the Ming dynasty are not skilled boat builders. It would not be right to entrust this task to them. He was also cunningly thinking. As long as I find some people from my country to take charge of the shipbuilding, the Ming dynasty will not be able to learn the secrets of shipbuilding. Doing this will provide gold while keeping the secrets of the country safe. He, Fang Zhuo replied, Okay, no problem. I will leave it to you to find people to build the ships for us. I also believe that those who are better can build better ships. Therefore, I will pay each person half a pound of gold. Mr. Liang Dai found this a sweet deal and immediately agreed. I will invite the best shipbuilders from my country to come and build ships for you as soon as possible. But Fang Zhuo said, No. What I mean is that I want you to recruit the best craftsmen from the Ming Dynasty. The Ming Dynasty is so vast, surely there are skilled workers. Mr. Liang Dai was devastated and slammed his bottom on the ground. He did not expect to encounter such a cunning person as Fang Jiuwa. This time, it was impossible to conceal any more secrets. Afterwards, Fang Jiuwa instructed his student Zi Jing. Student, tell the shipbuilders, and Mr. Liang Dai too that although I have always been generous and honest, I have a very capricious nature that changes like the weather. Then, Fang Jiwuwa told everyone, If anyone accepts gold, but works half-heartedly, Fang Jiwuwa will take back all the gold and be very angry. When I get angry, I will break their bones one by one. Mr. Liang Dai trembled like a dried branch and hurriedly declined. Ah, I see this responsibility is too great, and I'm afraid I cannot bear it. Fang Jiwua patted his shoulder and said, You don't have to worry. Just build a team of workers to make the ship very well and don't overthink. Once the ship is completed, I will name it the Great Friend of the Franzi Nation. It symbolizes the friendship between our two countries. At that time, the Ming Dynasty will cooperate with Franzi in trade, and you will also get what you want. After hearing this, Mr. Liang Dai looked very displeased. Before he could say anything more, Fang Jiwua ordered Zi Jing, to send the guests off. Zi Jing, feeling a bit anxious, asked Master Fang Jiwa, Is it all right to assign the shipbuilding task to Mr. Liang Dai? Fang Jiwa replied, Of course it's all right. Let me teach my student a philosophy. Do not doubt the friends you employ, and do not employ the friends you doubt. Fang Jiwa continued, By the way, I have sorted the seeds that the students sent and handed them to Zhang Xin, asking him to plant them well, especially this corn seed. Even a lazy person can easily plant this type of corn. Zi Jing, upon hearing this, showed an extremely excited expression, unable to believe that such a miracle could happen. In fact, during the Ming Dynasty, corn held great value. Although potatoes and sweet potatoes could also be easily planted, corn was very rich in starch, not only used as a staple food, but also for making sugar. Zi Jing felt strange about this knowledge. Fang Jiwua, then brushed his hands and said, The student just needs to listen to me. Even if I explained the Shi Jing Dong, the student wouldn't understand. Just give it to Zhang Xin. He will comprehend this matter. Zi Jing felt wronged and walked away sulking, as he thought that teacher Fang Juuo was angry with him about something. Zi Jing thought, Oh, my heart hurts so much. A short while later, Fang Juuo was holding a child in his arms. His expression at this moment was one of utter confusion. He still couldn't believe that his ancestors could have won so quickly. It had only been a year since they last met, and Fang Jiwua had gained a pretty little sister. The child was named Fang Xiao Fan by Fang Jing Long. When the baby sucked on Fang Jiwua's finger, it thought it was a pacifier, so it bit down hard, causing Fang Jiwua to cry out, Hey, hey, let go quickly. This is not that. Don't bite so hard. At that moment, the stepmother Milu appeared, appearing somewhat hazy, 
But Fang Jing Long couldn't help but love Shi Jing Dong. Milu smiled widely as she greeted Fang Juwa's son and said that the baby might be hungry and needed milk. Fang Juwa thought to himself, Why is she so friendly and approachable? Another servant girl took the baby and walked on. Milu awkwardly said, Your dad said you've been having a brain illness recently. I wonder if your illness has relapsed. Fang Jumua, with a bewildered expression, replied, No. Inside, he silently thought, Someone please appear to end this boring conversation for me. Suddenly, a sword was thrust straight into the ground. Fang Jiwu's face turned pale as a banana leaf, not knowing what was happening. The beauty Milu suddenly transformed into Shai Nu, pointing firmly and saying, If my son has any enemies here, just tell me. I will send that person to meet King of Hell. In no time. Okay, by this way, mother and I will become closer and more intimate. Fang Jiwu thought to himself, what a salty taste my dad has. Isn't it true that all men like gentle and cute women? Could it really be that fighting each other would lead to feelings? Is anything allowed? Oh dear. Fang Jiuo said to Miluo, I know that you want to have a good relationship with me. But I always persuade others with my virtues. Around us, there are only friends and no enemies. Miluo hearing this, scratched her head, feeling confused, and asked Fang Jiuo what he wanted and that she would help him. Fang Jiwua confidently pointed to the sky and declared, I want to get married. Milua's eyes widened in surprise. After that, she burst out laughing, praised her son for being so straightforward, and asked, Who do you like? Mother will arrange a match for you right away. Fang Jiwua replied, That is Princess Xu Rong, the daughter of the emperor. At this moment, Milu smiled awkwardly and said, Can you change your choice or have a different wish? This is truly out of this world. Upon hearing this, Fang Jiwu's face fell. I have feelings for no one but her. If you can't manage it, then so be it. Fortunately, I am also on my way to conquer the princess, so it's all right. A while later, in the room of the beautiful princess, she cheerfully told Fang Jiwu, I've heard that you have a little sister, right? Fang Jiwu replied with a faint smile. That's correct. How did you know about this so quickly, princess? The princess asked back, don't you Shi Jing Dong's daughter? Fang Jiwuwa responded. It's not that I don't Shi Jing Dong. It's just that I can't accept the fact that my father has a close relationship with a woman without telling me. He even had a child. What's even harder to accept is that my name is Fang Junua, while he named this child Fang Xiao Fan. If you don't know how to name a child, don't choose a name at all. With such similar names, what if we end up with the same name? The princess then said, the reason your father chose that name has a purpose. He wanted to show that he is always thinking of you. Your father truly cares for you. Upon hearing this, Fang Jiwuwa was taken aback as he recalled past events. Fang Jiwuwa recounts. Before, he had heard many people say that he was very mischievous in the past. His father had to worry about him while also providing for the family. His life was very difficult. But when he became ill, his father called for someone to perform acupuncture not sparing any expense to treat him. Later, when his father became wealthier, having three or four concubines was quite normal for a man like him. However, for his father, he dismissed all the matchmakers who came to the house. He truly loved him very much. Milu and the little girl arrived at the capital palace. The emperor summoned Milu to the capital palace. On the surface, it was to settle an old grudge, but in reality, the emperor wanted to closely inspect whether she could enter the Fang Jing Long family. As long as Milu could win the emperor's trust, otherwise, both father and son would have to live outside, or his father and Milu would be separated for a thousand years, never to meet again. The princess, upon hearing this, looked sad. Then she revealed, I had previously asked the queen mother, and she agreed to meet your stepmother. If the Queen Mother accepts her, then she will be the one the Queen Mother personally meets. At that time, no one would dare to mention her past again. Fang Jiwuwa was delighted and hurriedly clasped his hands to thank the princess. If the Queen Mother accepts it, it would be nothing better. At this moment, the princess felt shy, her cheeks flushed and said, There's no need to thank me. You and I have so many ties. Helping you is nothing, right? After that, Fang Jiwuwa opened his heart more. He said, this lovely little sister is a cherished member of our family. Stepmother Miluo also gradually became closer to Fang Juwa. Fang Juwuo praised the little girl, 
saying she would surely be beautiful and intelligent like him in the future. In fact, when mentioning Fang Juwa, the students in Jiang Taxi would immediately think of the image of a handsome young master, talented and intelligent. But now, he looked like he was no different from a long-time addict. The students wondered, What has happened to our great ancestor? How come he has become so worn and haggard, deteriorating so quickly? To understand the reason, one must go back to days before. At 2 a.m., Fang Juwu was awakened by the cries of his little sister piercing through the night, making it impossible for him to sleep peacefully. His eyes bloodshot. Fang Juhua just told the maid that the baby has been crying all night. Why does it have so many tears? After that, he raised his voice and shouted, I warn you, if you cry anymore, I won't be nice to you. The frightened baby widened its eyes, then happily supped on Fang Juhua's finger. The maid exclaimed, The baby has stopped crying, sir. So Fang Juhua brushed himself off and said he would go back to sleep. Right after that, the baby started crying loudly again. Fang Jugu became annoyed, pointed his finger sternly, and the baby immediately started sucking on his finger. Fang Jugu was surprised and tried sucking his own finger to see what it tasted like. He was startled to realize that baby Shi Jing Dong had a sweet taste on his finger. The maid reminded him, before the baby is weaned, it shouldn't be allowed to eat or drink anything else, or it won't want to drink mother's milk anymore. Hearing this, Fang Juwua immediately pulled his finger away, no longer allowing the baby to suck. The baby blinked tears, looking very pitiful. But Fang Juwua said, I am a tough young man, not so easily softened like that, darling. The next day, Fang Juwua's five fingers were swollen, along with his dumbfounded face. So was the tough young man really done for? Suddenly, the maid rushed in, reporting, Young lady has woken up, sir. The young lady wants to suck on her fingers again. Fang Jungwu was dumbstruck and said, There are no fingers left. They are all gone. But the child teared up, wanting to suck on her fingers no matter what. Fang Jungwu couldn't bear to see her so pitiful, so he immediately rummaged through all sorts of jars and bottles, his hands and feet moving in a flurry. In the blink of an eye, he had successfully crafted a baby bottle. Fang Jungwu handed it to his younger sibling Xiao Fan and said, Go ahead and suck on it. The younger sibling joyfully began to suck on the baby bottle. The maid witnessed this scene and was left speechless, only able to stand there with an ellipsis. Thus, a long-term single young man without a wife found himself bearing the heavy responsibility of parenting, changing diapers, feeding, potty training, putting to sleep, and so on. Every task Fang Jiwua had to do was all-encompassing. The group of young students, upon discovering this incident, huddled together to whisper among themselves. How could a great person like Teacher Fang Juhua be doing such trivial things? We have no idea what he's thinking. After hearing a group of students gossiping about him, Fang Juhua raised his voice and said, I have a very important book I want to teach my students. The entire group eagerly asked back, What book is it, teacher? Is it about the upcoming exam? Please show us. Fang Juhua replied, it is the method of stimulating Shi Jing Dong in women, the most scientific and accurate way. Everyone was shocked and spat blood everywhere. At that moment, while Fang Jiwuo was busy taking care of a child at home, Milu had come to meet Emperor Hongji to receive his first summons from the royal court. Fang Jiwuo was secretly worried, thinking, My father has been loyal, dedicating his whole life to the imperial court. If Milu is not careful and speaks too roughly, frightening the emperor, both I and my father could be kicked out of the capital palace. In reality, Milu was the leader of the rebel forces, which had caused significant headaches for officials, grand ministers, and even Emperor Hongji in finding ways to cope. Upon seeing Milu arrive, the officials were frightened, their faces darkened, while the emperor looked extremely tense. If any mistake occurred, he would immediately order action against Milu. Milu had now knelt down, clasping her hands in reverence to the emperor. The emperor then asked, Have you recognized your wrongdoing? Milu replied, In the past, I committed heinous crimes. At present, I am deeply remorseful. I know the emperor has a heart as vast and wide as the ocean. I hope the emperor will forgive me and grant me an opportunity to atone for my mistakes. Upon hearing this, the emperor was taken aback, silently praising, Fang Jing Long is indeed formidable. Not only has he taught his son well, but he has also taught his wife to change so rapidly. Truly remarkable. 
Next, Milu presented the emperor with a thick stack of books. She said, this is the golden ledger containing information about 370,000 residents of Guizhou. I humbly offer it to the emperor. The golden ledger of the Ming dynasty is similar to today's household registration books. Recording information, such as the number of people in a family, each person's occupation, hometown, and where they reside. The Golden Ledger serves as a resource for tax assessment in a region and, more broadly, for an entire country. Without taxes from the people, a nation cannot develop. Even if there is a desire to construct various infrastructure, such as transportation, roads, rivers, and maritime routes, there would be no means to carry this out. To make the country prosperous, we must first build roads for the people. The Ming Dynasty implemented policies to restrain the indigenous people in the Northwest. This was a policy of soft governance aimed at preventing uprisings by granting the locals a certain degree of autonomy. This policy meant that the natives were not allowed to be recorded in the Ming Dynasty's gold ledger, so they did not pay taxes to the Ming Dynasty for a long time. At this moment, the emperor could no longer maintain his serious demeanor and laughed very Xi Jingdong. But right after that, he coughed a few times and asked Milu about the reform of governance in Guizhou. He explained to Xi Jingdong that due to the soft governance policy, the autonomous rights of the people in Guizhou were led by a leader, and that leader had become a minor the emperor. That person was very Xi Jingdong, oppositional and caused trouble for the emperor. The emperor, with a stern expression, pointed and said, I call you big brother to give you some face. Do not act high and mighty to teach me. The emperor angrily shouted, You are truly disrespectful. I will find a skilled general to teach you a lesson. Darned your grandmother. He immediately took out a firearm to threaten. This is my land, my playground. I have the right. Even if you call someone here, I will handle them all. The locals in Guizhou are very unruly and violent. They do not comply with the laws of the Ming dynasty. Furthermore, there are language barriers and different customs, making it increasingly difficult for both sides to harmonize. Milu then clasped his hands and said, The people my husband sent are not ordinary officials, but deputy generals and seasoned soldiers, knowledgeable about agriculture and stronger than others. The life of the people in Guizhou is truly very impoverished. The invited individuals introduced themselves to the people of Guizhou as coming here to cultivate crops and produce food in order to help the impoverished people who will no longer suffer from hunger. When the poor people of Gizhou learned about this, the language barrier was no longer an issue. As long as they receive food, they will be extremely grateful and respectful to those who have helped them. Miluo continued, After that, the group sent by Fang Jing Long taught the people of Gizhou to learn Zhang language. When teaching Zhang language, the culture of the Ming dynasty will naturally be brought up. Miluo continued to explain Xi Jing Dong. The people at that time would gradually harmonize with the culture of the Ming dynasty through refined and skillful methods, without the need for violence, coercion, or threats. The people of Gizhou slowly accepted the leadership of the Ming dynasty and embraced their culture. Their fondness for the Ming dynasty also grew increasingly. After hearing Milu's recounting, Liu Nian raised his hand to press like and praised Fang Jing Long as truly a master. The way to win over the people in Guizhou was indeed nothing short of remarkable. The emperor also asked Fang Jing Long, Have you really conquered the people of Guizhou just in such a short time? Milu replied, Yes, your majesty. But the emperor was very insightful regarding the Ming dynasty. He guessed that a general whose life had been filled with killing enemies, like Fang Jing Long, would never come up with such a clever way to conquer the people. This was a method that Milu had devised. Milu then added, I just want to help my husband and redeem the mistakes I have made, your majesty. At this moment, the emperor smiled and silently praised Fang Jing Long, indeed a genius. He had the secret technique to turn enemies into his wife. It was truly remarkable. The emperor thought to himself, Well done, Fang Jing Long. You have tamed a woman of the Ming dynasty, skilled as she is. Contributing to the Ming dynasty is truly remarkable. So the emperor asked Miluo, You do not have a Chinese name yet, do you? Now I believe that you are willing to be loyal and serve my Ming dynasty. You shall take the surname Liu and be named Ru Yi. Milu immediately clasped her hands. Thank you, the emperor, for this name. From now on, I will have only one name, and that is Liu Ru Yi. Fang Jumua, standing outside, 
smiled with joy. When the emperor gave her a Chinese name, it meant that Milu had been accepted by the emperor and her sins were forgiven. Some time later, since the emperor had allowed the soldiers to fish at sea, Ningbo County had developed tremendously. Merchants have the opportunity to get rich by purchasing, processing, and selling fish to the people. The citizens had more job opportunities, higher wages, and their lives increasingly flourished. The nobility bought large quantities of fish and resold it elsewhere. These gentlemen enjoyed a very luxurious life, living off others without working, which was in stark contrast to the principles of a certain teacher who had once proclaimed. General Shi Jing Dong felt truly frustrated that now there was a powerful army mobilized to suppress pirates. Yet day after day, month after month, they only fished and did not engage in any battles. He deeply wished for the pirates to come, so that he could have an opportunity to fight a grand battle with them. Not long after, in the capital palace, someone shouted, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, there is a serious matter. The Southeast has reported an urgent situation. The pirates have attacked Taijo province. We need someone to respond urgently, Your Majesty. Upon hearing this, the emperor became so furious that he cursed. These pirates are indeed wicked and cruel. They rob and kill people like weeds. The people of Taizhou must be terrified and scared. Young and old, they spare none. The soldiers guarding Taizhou are certainly very weak now. They must have been completely wiped out. The emperor was so enraged that he slammed his hand down on the chair with a loud thud. At this moment, in Ningbo County, since Taizhou was very close to Ningbo, Hu Shan had also received the news and angrily cursed the pirates. Those damn dogs attacked Taizhou without attacking Ningbo. They are truly underestimating us. General Shi Jing Dong stroked his chin in thought. Our Ningbo County is clearly wealthier, yet it is hated by those pirates. If they truly only wanted to plunder, they should be coming to rob us instead. Yet they are attacking Taizhou. I do not know the reason for that. Shi Jing Dong continued. Ah, I see. Ningbo is indeed their target. They are attacking from the east and west pretending to strike Tai Zhao to lure the troops and cavalry around there to assist Tai Zhao. Then, taking advantage of that, they will immediately attack us. How clever! He gleefully praised himself. Finally, they are attacking Ningbo. Let them come. In the capital palace, Liu Nian had also discovered this situation and explained to the emperor, Tai Zhou province is surely just bait. Next, the pirates will quickly attack Ningbo. The emperor, worried, wanted to send reinforcements to Ningbo, but Liu Nian advised that it was already too late. Then, Shi Qian turned to Fang Jiuwa and asked, How many soldiers are currently in Ningbo? Fang Jiuwa definitely replied, 300 people. He angrily asked again, What? Are you joking with me? The army there has been recruited and trained for so long, yet there are only 300 people. How could that be enough to deal with this situation? Previously, about 400 pirates had killed thousands of soldiers. What can your 300 people do? Fang Jiuwu was harshly criticized and felt belittled. However, he quickly regained his composure, clenched his fists, and stated confidently, You don't have to worry about this. I ensure that Ningbo County will swiftly eliminate the pirates. Let's just wait for the victory news, and then we can celebrate. The two men in red were left speechless, their faces bewildered. The emperor, on the other hand, had a very tense expression, as he could only place his trust in those soldiers at that moment. Afterward, everyone left the room. The crown prince excitedly told Fang Juhua, let's go to Ningbo to assist Tang Banhu and the soldiers in fighting the pirates. But Fang Juhua refused. Previously, we entrusted them with the task of guarding Ningbo port. Therefore, we must wholeheartedly believe that they will succeed. The crown prince asked again, but what if we fail? What if our soldiers are completely wiped out? Fang Jiuwa immediately replied, I still have four talented disciples. If we fail, I will send my disciples to Ningbo to rebuild a new army until we completely eradicate the pirates. With four chances left, we will definitely win. However, some people were still skeptical that Fang Jiuwa was speaking nonsense. They believed that the soldiers in Ningbo were currently very strong, and if we went there, it would only make them feel that we do not trust them. Let our army have a chance to demonstrate their strength. At this moment, the two generals Hu Shai Shan and Shi Jing Dong were standing proudly waiting for the pirates to arrive. General Hu Shai Shan desired a one-on-one -on -one duel with each pirate so they could see his strength. 
General Xi Jingdong was also unafraid of confrontation and was ready to fight. Previously, the people in Ningbo County had lived a very happy life as the guards went out to sea to fish every day. But right now, in preparation for the fight against the pirates, for many days, the soldiers just lay around on the beach and did nothing. As a result, the merchants and nobles no longer had fish to sell. They gathered to curse Hu Shen, the district magistrate, saying, He is acting crazy. If he doesn't let the soldiers go out to fish, how will they make a living? Magistrate Hu Shang replied, If you don't understand anything about the guava, don't bark nonsense. Currently, the pirates have already attacked Taijiao, so our soldiers in Ningbo must always be on guard. They can attack at any time. The old man with the white beard retorted, The pirates attacked Taijiao and have already withdrawn their troops. When would they have the time to come attack us in Ningbo anymore? However, Magistrate Hu Shang told old white beard to shut up and go home. He said, if they don't come today, they may come tomorrow. If they haven't come yet, then the soldiers can't go out to fish. Do you understand now? Old White Beard was so angry that he wanted to rush in and hit Hu Shang. The men around him joined in, cursing Hu Shang. You're an old fool. I have invested several thousand tails to open a fish shop. If there are no fish, what will I sell? One person said, and that other man has accepted a deposit from the fish buyer of several hundred tails all of which are significant and intimate business deals. If we can't deliver the fish, then how will I do business again? The district magistrate Hu Shang sternly asked, What if the pirates attack us unexpectedly? What if the soldiers are out at sea fishing and can't return in time? Your lives won't matter then, right? Don't even think about doing any trading. Old White Bird still wanted the soldiers to go out to sea to fish, and he didn't care whether the pirates came or not. District Magistrate Hu Shang was also well aware that these men had high walls around their homes and secure hiding places. You only think about your own interests. What about the lives of the thousands of poor people out there? Old White Beard asked again, When will the soldiers go back out to fish? I need an exact answer. District Magistrate Hu Shang replied, It's impossible to know. All I can tell you is that if the pirates haven't come yet and haven't been completely eradicated, then all of us are still at risk of being attacked by them at any time. This answer made old White Beard feel regret for his precious children, who were gradually flying up to the sky. In the days when the pirates had not yet been eradicated, he could not earn a single silver coin. The man in the blue shirt collapsed in despair, feeling as if his lover had left him for another. Meanwhile, the man in the brown shirt had effectively gone bankrupt. All the money he had invested in the store had vanished completely. In fact, Prior to this, Tang Banhu had cheerfully told County Magistrate Hu Shang, those noblemen and wealthy merchants who have grown accustomed to living a life of luxury for an extended period, when the prosperous business suddenly comes to an end, you will feel as if bitten by a spicy chili pepper and will frantically seek all ways to exterminate the pirates. Tang Banhu advised that we should take advantage of this to fight against the pirates. Currently, just as Tang Banhu had predicted, Mr. White Beard radiated killing intent like a roaring flame. He then exerted himself like a super saiyan at the final level, transforming and shouting, Damn those pirates, I swear I will tear you to pieces and feed you to the dogs. So the men shouted that they would contribute gold, silver, and everything they could to County Magistrate Hu Shang. You must kill those bastards. No matter the cost, we will donate everything to you. The official Hu Shang upon hearing this, laughed with delight and praised the gentlemen for their kindness. He said, Currently, the pirates do not know how they have obtained so much information about our Ningbo County. I suspect they have spies colluding with the people on land. If these individuals reveal our confidential information, it will be very difficult to wipe out all the pirates. Thus, the gentlemen hurried off faster than a dog thief. After that, Whitebeard grabbed the collar of one scoundrel and asked, why you have so many foreign language books in your house? Are you a spy for the pirates? Another gentleman discovered a defense map of the Ming dynasty in another scoundrel's house and angrily seized him by the neck, shouting, You damn fool! You're so poor, yet you hide this thing in your house. What are you planning to do? Sell it to the pirates. Then you shall die. The brown-clad man was torturing a family member and asked, Why you have so many treasures from abroad? You must be a damn smuggler working with the pirates. All those suspected of being spies colluding with the pirates were completely captured and locked up. A short while later, in the dead of night, 
The boats from the sea were just approaching the land. The guards discovered them and immediately rang the bell loudly to signal the townspeople to wake up. The pirates are coming. The pirates are coming. Everyone, quickly prepare to fight. Old White Beard gasped in horror, not believing that the pirates had actually arrived. He turned to see the soldiers with serious expressions, which struck him as very strange. He wondered if they were afraid, but to his surprise, he realized that they all felt excited. Finally, this day has come. We've been waiting for you guys for quite a while. Prior to this, Tang Banhu had made a bet with the soldiers. Each pirate is worth 10 pieces of silver, with no limit. The number of pirates you kill will earn you that much silver. The opportunity to get rich has finally come for you. Okay. The whole group cheered loudly. Ah, Tang Banhu is truly amazing. We will definitely kill them all without letting any escape. You can rest assured. Right now, the soldiers were full of youth and high spirits, shouting loudly. Here comes our chance to change our lives. It's all silver. We will definitely not let any of them escape. General Shi Jing Dong was also frightened by this group of soldiers. He was sweating profusely and reminded his comrades to stay calm. Let's wait until they get a little deeper before we act. It would be a pity if they managed to escape. At this moment, Old White Beard felt terrified and shouted, Are these soldiers not afraid of death? Such bravery can only mean they're all mad. Shi Jing Dong also sensed that something was wrong, his face filled with confusion. In the past, he used to encourage his troops to bravely charge into battle. But now, he earnestly advised them not to be too excited. Are they crazy? Or are we the ones who are crazy? Currently, the attacker of Ningbo was one of the greatest pirate leaders in the southeast, known as Naka Wulang. Although he was a leader, his appearance looked quite shabby. A ball underling said, There are people on shore sounding the alarm. It seems that Ningbo County has some very well-trained soldiers. There must be Ming Dynasty troops ambushing us on the shore. However, the pirate general dismissed this with contempt, saying, the Ming Dynasty army is like a chick. What I, Xi Jing Dong, fear most is being ambushed by the Ming Dynasty troops. The name of the bandit captain continued. Every time we fight them, our soldiers just need to raise their swords, and those Ming Dynasty soldiers run like a pack of dogs. After that, we chase them to their ends and slaughter them, enjoying ourselves without sparing a single one. The thrill of hunting down the Ming Dynasty soldiers in Taijiao is still fresh in my mind. Ha 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 ha. Then everyone burst into loud laughter, feeling very triumphant. The big brother was absolutely right. The Ming Dynasty soldiers were just a bunch of useless vermin. Ha ha ha. Suddenly, the bald-headed man jolted and noticed a large group of soldiers gathering densely. The bald-headed man immediately pointed and shouted, there's a bunch of useless Ming Dynasty soldiers over there. Captain Naka Wulang immediately picked up a weapon and commanded, You guys, get ashore, slaughter all of them. Let them know who is truly the king of the seas. Then, all the pirates leaped ashore, racing forward like the wind. The soldiers on the shore shouted loudly, The pirates are coming, we must run. Hearing this, the bandit captain became even more pleased and shouted loudly, the Ming Dynasty soldiers are still as useless as ever. Seeing us approach, they run away like a dog. Ha ha ha. However, in fact, these soldiers had been sent out earlier by Hu Shai Shan to tempt the pirates. Hu Shai Shan also advised, We must not act hastily. Let's lure them a little deeper, and then we will ambush the whole lot, leaving not a single one to escape. Afterwards, the pirates continued to dash deeper in pursuit. The pirate captain was even more eager, claiming, the Ming Dynasty troops are about to exhaust themselves, and we will enjoy the thrill of slaughtering them. But unexpectedly, Hu Shan shouted loudly, The opportunity has come. Brothers, let's charge into battle. At that, all the soldiers turned around, ready with their weapons. The bald pirate was struck with fear and screamed, Why are they not running anymore? The pirate captain Naka Wulang was over the moon, thinking that the Ming Dynasty soldiers had given up. He urged, Fly forward, let's feast on their flesh. Thus, all the pirates charged ahead. But the Ming Dynasty soldiers were ready. In the eyes of these young men, the pirates were merely giant moving stones. One overly excited young soldier shouted, There are more than 400 of them. That's more than 4,000 quantities of silver. Brothers. So the group of soldiers rushed in like wild beasts, escaping from their cages, shouting loudly, 
We are about to become rich. Kill them all, and we will become wealthy tycoons. They chanted, Fish, 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 fish. General Shi Jing Dong reminded them, Our soldiers are the most talented and have been thoroughly trained. He told them to remember their daily drills, maintain formation, and eliminate all the pirates. Nevertheless, he felt a bit worried as he recalled their previous defeat against those cunning pirates. He reminded the soldiers not to underestimate the strength of their foes. But Hu Shan was too reckless, shouting loudly, You brothers have nothing to fear from these pirates. Smash them to pieces for me. He did not understand how difficult it was to advise the soldiers to remain calm. Shi Jing Dong did not expect to encounter such a reckless man. With no other option, he darted up, determined to fight against the pirates. With years of experience as a rogue, Hu Shai Shan possessed formidable martial arts skills. He charged in like King Kong, wanting to duel one on one with the pirate commander Naka Wu Lang. The pirate general laughed triumphantly, confident that he could easily kill the large and powerful Hu Shai Shan with just one stroke of his sword. At that moment, his bald companion advised him not to be too loud. Although the white bearded man was as big as an elephant, he moved very agilely and wore iron armor, making him not easy to deal with. The pirate general was very clever and had prepared thoroughly, targeting the weak spot on Hu Shai Shan's side, where there was no armor. So he gleefully charged in with two swords in hand. But just one second later, he was gently blocked by Hu Shai Shan, causing both swords to be lodged in the ground, and he fell flat on his face. The pirate general was completely shocked, questioning what was happening. He felt as if he had just collided with a cargo truck. Meanwhile, Hu Shai Shan did not understand. Why are pirates not as strong as he had heard, but now seemed like killing a mosquito? So, are they really that strong? After that, with such an attractive bounty, killing a pirate would earn ten quantities of silver from Tang Banu. At that moment, the Ming Dynasty soldiers seemed to be empowered with 999 points. One young man smashed two pirates' heads together, instantly earning 20 quantities of silver. Mr. Hu Shai Shan only needed one strike to kill ten pirates and receive one hundred quantities of silver. At the spot of another young soldier, when a pirate charged at him intending to attack, the young soldier quickly used one hand to hold both of the pirate's arms raised with a sword. The pirate could not move, trembling like a scared dog. The young soldier asked, What on earth did you eat to become so strong? Can you let go of my hands so I can negotiate peace? Immediately, the young soldier delivered a stabbing blow to the pirate, causing him to bleed profusely, and replied, Let this guy know that I have eaten you. The more of your kind I kill, the more silver I'll earn, and the more I will be able to consume. The bald man at that moment was dumbfounded, unable to believe it. He thought Ming Dynasty soldiers were just rookies, but today they were beyond his wildest imagination, so he immediately ran faster than when being chased by dogs, shouting, you all better run quick. The group of soldiers from the Ming Dynasty was startled and turned around, seeing their shining gold pieces running away. One soldier with bloodshot eyes shouted, Our gold and silver are fleeing. Brothers, quickly chase after them. Don't let a single piece get away. After a while, County Magistrate Hu Xiang arrived, his eyes wide open like an owl. More than 400 pirates had been completely wiped out in just one night. Hu Shang was in tears because this was the first time the Ming Dynasty had achieved a complete victory against the pirates. He wanted to report this matter to the emperor immediately. When the emperor in the capital palace received the news, he was overjoyed and exclaimed, This is truly incredible. He enthusiastically praised the soldiers in Ningbo, saying that they were truly formidable. The pirates, with such terrifying strength, had been completely eradicated. We feel proud and very excited about this matter. After just half a year of recruiting and training soldiers, they were able to eliminate all the pirates. Let us quickly go to Jiang Kexai to inquire how the National Guard Mansion trains its soldiers. Soon after, in Jiang Tisi, someone stood up to speak. The person said, I know that the soldiers fighting against the pirates have been loyal and brave. They have devoted themselves entirely to the country and are ready to sacrifice. Therefore, they easily defeated the pirates. However, the crown prince believes that what matters is money. In fact, there is only one word to solve Xu Jingdong, and that is money. I have ordered to spend money to provide them with food and rewards. Each time they kill a pirate, they will receive a cash reward. The more they kill, the more money they will have. 
By doing this, the soldiers will feel that their efforts in the life and death battle are worthwhile. The students still argued that money does not have such power. I still believe they are loyal and patriotic people. That is the main reason. The crown prince replied that no matter how loyal and patriotic the soldiers are, with an empty stomach, they cannot fight well. Such trivial desires as hunger can diminish their fighting strength. The crown prince emphasized that, without food, the soldiers will not be able to fight, and the enemies will laugh at them. The crown prince continued, For example, my father, he wants to be a great emperor, but he always wants Mr. Chi Kian and Mr. Liu Nian to speak well of him. Doing so is no different from a farce. Currently, the emperor and the two grand ministers below that heard everything that has been said. The three men did not expect that the crown prince would be so unreasonable. The young man, still unaware, continued to preach. You all should look at reality. Everyone has their own selfish desires, whether it is the emperor or anyone else. Even if you want to be a wise sage, that is nothing wrong. It is a desire of everyone. But right now, you scholars have a bad habit. That is wanting to be wise sages while forcing others to do what you think. The crown prince went on. Soldiers are just ordinary people. They do not have the desire to become wise sages. In fact, their only simple wish is to have enough to eat and live a better life. If these needs are not guaranteed, then they have no reason to risk their lives to serve the country. At that time, both the spirit and the physical condition of the soldiers will decline significantly. I have said all that needs to be said. I am going to eat to fill my stomach now. As the crown prince stepped outside, someone called out loudly, The crown prince, please stop. The emperor has something to say to you. The crown prince immediately had an expression as if he had eaten something unpleasant. In his heart, he thought, Why is this happening? Does he not know if he can hear anything? The emperor then said, I am here to inform you of good news. Initially, I wanted to ask you about how to train the soldiers here. But after listening to your passionate lecture, I realize that if the soldiers are well-fed and have rewards for victory, they will serve the imperial court regardless of their own lives. This lecture was excellent. You truly are my son. However, there is one thing I want to gently remind you, my beloved son. When lecturing students, do not speak ill of me. The crown prince immediately put on an admirable expression and said, I would never speak ill of you, dear father. My intention was only to praise you for your grand aspirations to become a magnificent emperor. But father, please take my advice this time. You are already a wonderful emperor, so there is no need to hide a few minor flaws so meticulously. Ah, he he. The emperor felt extremely upset but still had to acknowledge that his son's lesson was correct. The brothers in the team, including Fang Jiuwe, secretly hoped the emperor would deal with that damn crown prince as harshly as possible. He had reported too much in Jiang Kexi and was unbearable anymore. In fact, the pirates had not been completely eradicated. General Shi Jing Dong had boarded a ship with soldiers to chase after the pirates, pursuing them all the way to Baiwei Island, their stronghold. General Shi Jing Dong, with tears in his eyes, pointed and said, That is our ship, stolen by the pirates. It was right here that our Ming dynasty suffered a humiliating defeat. On this island, I estimate there are about 1,500 pirates, but right now we only have 300 men. Immediately, the soldiers' eyes brightened and they whispered to each other, As many as 1,500? Isn't that 15,000 quantity of silver? So delicious, so tempting. General Xi Jingdong was so furious that he could not find the words to respond. At that moment, a bald man standing on the island shouted loudly, Brothers, Quickly kill them all. Let them see the power of our king of the seas. Let's go. The soldiers of the Ming dynasty discovered that the pirates were approaching in droves. General Shi Jingdong shouted, Brothers, let's form the battle line as we practiced before. Immediately, five soldiers established a powerful defensive and offensive formation. At that moment, Shi Jingdong smiled with satisfaction, thinking that the previous training had indeed been effective. The combat techniques and tactics had seeped into the very bones of the soldiers. Suddenly, a pirate charged in to attack, but only struck the shield of the young soldier in front. Right after, another soldier stabbed a spiky spear into the bald pirate, causing him to flinch and raise his hands to defend. In an instant, another soldier pierced this pirate's armpit, leaving him cold and causing him to fall, officially meeting the king of hell. After a while, 
300 Ming soldiers defeated over 1,500 pirates. One soldier fighting against five and still winning was truly miraculous. At this moment, the soldiers shouted loudly, We have succeeded. We have killed all the pirates. Not a single one is left. General Shi Jing Dong wept like a waterfall, secretly thinking that Fang Juwu's strategy was truly powerful. The military secrets presented by Fang Juwu were indeed a wonderful truth. Later, the Ming Dynasty soldiers found beautiful women who had been captured by the pirates and held here for nefarious purposes. Some other soldiers discovered the hiding place of the pirates' treasures and provisions. When they opened it, they saw a mountain of gold and silver, jewels sparkling, so much that it was hard to believe. Tain Banhu looked at the treasures and was stunned, his eyes wide open in amazement. After some time, the fleet returned to the mainland. Hu Shang was delighted that everyone had returned victorious and the nobles and merchants were also pleased, because fish would soon be available for sale. Subsequently, Emperor Hongji learned that the soldiers from Ningbo had successfully destroyed the pirate's lair. He summoned General Shi Jing Dong and County Magistrate Hu Shine to the capital palace. These two were also individuals he had never met before. The emperor eagerly asked, How should I reward you two gentlemen? Mr. Shi Jing Dong clasped his hands and addressed the emperor. When I first arrived in Ningbo County, I was disheartened and thought that I would never be able to become a general again. However, after reading the training manuals for soldiers by Fang Juwa, I regained boundless hope, believing that I could defeat the pirates. This made me realize that there are still great individuals like him in this world. I humbly asked the emperor to issue an imperial edict, allowing Fang Juwa to take me as his disciple. The emperor widened his eyes, utterly astonished. After a moment, he said, do not be so loud. Even if I were to issue an imperial edict, if Fang Jiwua does not wish to accept you, you still would not have the chance to become his disciple. So some time later, at Fang Jiwua's place, Mr. Shi Jing Dong clasped his hands and loudly proclaimed, Disciple Shi Jing Dong pays respects to Master Fang Jiwua. Today, I come here to express my immense respect for my master. Fang Jiwuo was taken aback that Mr. Shi Jing Dong would recognize him as a master so boldly. Mr. Shi Jing Dong then kneeled down and exclaimed, Thanks to the military manual granted by my master to me, only after reading it did I realize my mistakes and come to understand many things. From that point, I was able to achieve victory over the wicked pirates. Shi Jing Dong continued, Disciple has asked the emperor to issue an imperial edict for master to accept the disciple as an apprentice. Disciple also hopes that Master Fang Jiuo will give Disciple a chance to contribute well to Master. Fang Jiuo hurriedly told Shi Jing Dong to stand up. How can I be worthy to be your master? Fang Jiuo felt guilty because the military strategies had been copied from General Ji Qi Guang, who happened to be the biological son of Shi Jing Dong. But Shi Jing Dong was like a fanatical admirer, determined to have Fang Jiuo as his master. If not, he would kneel there forever and never stand up. Fang Juwua did not expect to encounter someone so stubborn. He awkwardly smiled and told Shi Jing Dong, Don't act like this, because I truly do not dare to accept you as a disciple. Then Shi Jing Dong used his final tactic. If Master does not accept the disciple, then the rest of the disciple's life will have nothing worth living for. Tonight the disciple will go to Saigon Bridge and jump down to die. Upon hearing this, Fang Juwa's face went blank and he had no choice but to reluctantly accept Shi Jing Dong as his disciple. Mr. Hu Shang, hiding to the side, witnessed this scene and had to hit like for Fang Jiuo, because it was rare to see this young man so humble. Suddenly, the young man Zi Jing appeared, weeping grotesquely. The young man felt a sharp pain, as he was indeed the most difficult disciple to accept. Previously, he had to risk his life jumping from a tall building, forcing Master Fang Jiuo to accept him. The feeling was truly very painful. After that, the emperor asked the district magistrate Hu Shang what he desired as a reward. The magistrate replied, I do not need anything. I just want to eat well, your majesty. The emperor immediately agreed. A moment later, a table filled with many delicious and beautifully presented dishes was laid out. The emperor smiled with delight and said, Let us enjoy a royal banquet together. However, Mr. Hu Shang stood there stunned not knowing what to do. The emperor curiously asked, Why are you not eating? Do you feel that these dishes are so delightful that you are embarrassed to eat them?
Mr. Hu Shang scratched his head and replied, No, your majesty. These dishes do not suit my taste. At this point, the emperor was completely bewildered and at a loss for words. Mr. Hu Shang then started to explain to the emperor. Mr. Hu Shang said, For example, this braised duck dish, your majesty, before braising the duck, you should roast it over charcoal to extract the fat. If you do not do that and braise it directly, the dish will end up greasy and unappetizing. The emperor asked Mr. Hu Shang, Is the usual meal of the officials in Ningbo so elaborate? Mr. Hu Shang replied, It's not that I cannot eat, your majesty. It's just that ordinary people do not have rice to eat, so they can only eat yellow croakers. They eat them to the point of fatigue. I hope that the people can have better dishes, so I have been trying every day to research different cooking methods so that they won't get tired of fish anymore. The emperor felt that as long as one eats enough, the food would be good, but Mr. Hu Xiang disagreed. He argued, If you do not know how to cook, the food will not taste good, and no one will eat it. Isn't that a waste of food? A while later, at Fang Jiu's place, Mr. Hu Xiang wept and told Fang Jiu, The emperor cannot understand my feelings. Today, I ate a lot of food, but I did not find it enjoyable at all. Fang Jiu immediately handed over a chili and said, Jiang Tai has a lot of strange fruits and vegetables. You can try the ingredients there and see. Mr. Hu Shang held the chili in his hand and felt very strange, as he had never seen a fruit shaped like this. So he quickly ran into the kitchen to experiment right away. After a while, he served Fang Jiuwa eight dishes, including a dish of fish head cooked with minced chili. Just looking at this dish was enough to see it was unbelievably spicy. Fang Jiuwa picked up a piece and immediately exclaimed, This dish is truly delicious. However, Mr. Hu Shang had transformed into Lai Yang Bao Lin, with his lips considerably swollen. He sighed, How can I try this? I feel a burning sensation in my mouth and tongue. Fang Jiwua looked at him and sweated profusely, asking if he was okay. Mr. Hu Shang replied, Right now, I feel a tingling sensation, indescribably pleasurable. Suddenly, he felt as if struck by lightning, and a thought struck him. Instantly, he took out a mortar and pestle and began pounding away like a group of young men experiencing a surge of energy. Fang Jiwua stood beside, feeling surprised. What is this? Could it be that this guy ate something terrible and went crazy? In a blink of an eye, Mr. Hu Shang had prepared a jar of some kind of seasoning. Fang Jiwua dipped a little bit and tasted it. Immediately his eyes widened in shock as he realized this was the flavor of Shai San Spice. Currently, this is a special seasoning used to marinate dishes such as chicken entrails, Shai San Spice tripe, roasted chicken, roasted duck, grilled meat, grilled fish, or as a condiment with various starchy dishes. Fang Jiwua then sprinkled some seasoning into the noodles and tasted it. He immediately exclaimed, Oh my God, this is so delicious. It's just like the kind of noodles that Grandma used to make for me. Mr. Hu Shang also tasted it and found the dish even better. He imagined a new business idea. Fang Jiwua stood beside him, grinning slyly, thinking, This time there's a chance to make a fortune. Mr. Hu Shang pulled out a book and said, I don't know what to name this seasoning. We need to find a name that is really elegant and meaningful. Thus, Fang Jiwu smiled slyly and said, This kind of spice can be sold to people all over the world. There's no need to give it a fancy name. I propose we name it Hu Shang Shei San Chong. Mr. Hu Shang questioned, Why does this name sound so ridiculous? Fang Jiwu immediately explained to Shi Jing Dong, This name is very meaningful because it's named after the county magistrate. When this name is mentioned, everyone will immediately think of Hu Shang as a wonderful chef. Naming it this way shows that you have great confidence in this spice, which will make people willing to trust it and buy more. Upon hearing this, Mr. Hu Shang was so moved that tears and snot flowed down his face. Fang Jiwua, you really know how to think of me. From now on, let's call it Hu Shang Shei San Chong. Boo Hu. Right after that, Fang Jiwua quickly opened a grand store to sell this spice to the people. Come on, everyone passing by, stop in and take a look. This spice contains a magical chili that stimulates blood circulation, helps the body stay healthy, and cures all ailments. Fang Jiwua continued to promote. This seasoning is called Jivai Hu Shang Shai San Chong. Buy one box, get two boxes free, and only pay for three. Fang Jiwua marketed it in a multi-level fashion. 
yet the crowds of people were still bustling and jostling to buy. The sales were booming like fresh shrimp, truly miraculous. The scene shifts to a vast plain, where an eagle is being held by a man named Eula by its two legs. Despite being older, Eula really enjoys playing with large birds. Suddenly, the Tata soldiers appear and ask Eula where he is from. Looking at the malicious expressions of these soldiers, it was clear that nothing good would come of it. Thus, Eula was subjected to a beating by the group of soldiers. However, in reality, Eula was not an ordinary citizen of the Ming dynasty, but the child of a younger sister of the Zhu Queen Mother, making him the grandchild of the Zhu Queen Mother. When the Tata soldiers discovered this, they were very pleased. So you are the grandchild of the Zhu Queen Mother. Be sure to watch him closely. When the Ming Dynasty's reinforcements arrive, we will deal with each one of them. At this moment, Yula fell into a state of depression, muttering incessantly. On that evening, the two Tata soldiers were fast asleep while Mr. Zula was in a state of utter panic. Tears streamed down his face. He just wanted to go home, and his tears flowed continuously. Suddenly, he jolted awake, noticing something in the sky. It was the silhouette of a hot air balloon approaching, truly strange and unbelievable. Mr. Zulo wondered, am I dreaming? As a gigantic balloon appears in the sky. Next, the person in the hot air balloon threw down an anchor, which hooked onto a large rock. The hot air balloon then descended to the ground. Two young men quickly jumped down and grabbed Mr. Zula. They tucked him under their arms and ran away as fast as the wind. Mr. Zula shouted in fear, who are you? One of the young men replied, I am Shen Ao, the son of Principal Shen Yun. Earlier, in the capital palace, when Zhu Queen Mother learned that her grandson had been kidnapped, she was overwhelmed with sadness and fell ill in bed. The princess felt great sympathy for her queen mother. If Zhu La could not be rescued, her illness would not be curable. Fang Zhuwuo was aware of this situation and told the princess, You don't need to worry. I will handle this little matter. So our dear friend concocted a scheme for the two unfortunate individuals, stating, among the young students at Jiang Tsai Academy. These two pupils are those I hold in the highest regard. Therefore, I have an important task to assign to you to demonstrate your abilities. The inseparable brothers Shen Eo and Shai Ba were so moved they nearly wept. They rushed at full speed, at all costs, to rescue Mr. Zula, proclaiming, We have come here at the behest of teacher Fang Juwua to rescue you. Mr. Zula wondered, What is happening? That Fang Juwua usually just plays around and has nothing to do. Why has he summoned people to rescue me today? Immediately, the two young students angrily scolded. How dare you speak ill of my teacher? Do you believe I won't throw you back to the Tata? Letting them chop you up for the dogs to eat. Mr. Zula, in a panic, exclaimed. Don't do that. From now on, Fang Juwua is my parent. I won't dare to speak nonsense anymore. Then... Mr. Zula was thrown onto a hot air balloon by the two young men. He slammed his back down onto the ground, his mouth agape, his eyes wide open, and let out a loud, piercing scream. The three soldiers from Tata immediately woke up in shock when they discovered Mr. Zula was trying to escape. Shen Ao and Shaiba turned to see a swarm of Tata people rushing towards them like ants. Suddenly, one foolish soldier cut the tethering line, causing the hot air balloon to soar into the sky. At this moment, Mr. Zula smugly cursed. The Tata guys are a bunch of fools. If you're so tough, come and catch me. But unexpectedly, an arrow flew in and pierced the hot air balloon. Shen Ao thought to himself, Oh no, the balloon is punctured. We are about to fall to the ground. A Tata soldier shooting at the capital palace below was gloating early. You guys are about to die. That balloon will drop quickly. However, Shai Bao responded, That's not true. Master Fang Juwa anticipated this. He instructed that if the balloon gets punctured and its ascent is affected, the students just need to throw off the objects on the balloon for it to rise again. Shaiba immediately threw down an axe. A Tata soldier below, clueless, wondered, What is that? When he realized it was an axe, he officially went to meet King of Hell. The three soldiers beside them watched this scene in shock, mouths gaping and eyes wide because this person was none other than the Prince of Tata. After the news that Zhu Lo was surrounded by Tata forces reached the capital palace, the Queen Mother thought her beloved grandson had been killed. She was so grief-stricken that she fell ill. Suddenly, an eunuch came to report. Your Majesty, 
Ju La has been rescued. He is now on his way to pay his respects to the Queen Mother. Upon hearing the news, the Queen Mother immediately regained her composure, faster than when an old lover betrays her, causing the Emperor to also stare in disbelief, mouth agape. Then, Ju La tearfully recounted to the Queen Mother, Fang Ju with students, Shen Ao and Shai Ba, created a basket that can fly in the air. They carried me through the clouds back to the capital palace. The Queen Mother, upon hearing this, thought her grandson had lost his mind and could not believe what she was hearing. Zhu Lao replied, If the Queen Mother does not believe me, you can ask Fang Zhuhua. He then confidently explained, When the air inside the balloon is heated, the difference in air density inside and outside the balloon creates lift. A wicker basket beneath the balloon will rise if we can control the amount of air inside the balloon through a switch. We can control the balloon to ascend or descend at our will. Upon hearing this, the crown prince immediately declared that Fang Juwua was exaggerating. Unless you fly up for me to see right now, I won't believe it. Fang Juwua then leaned close to the crown prince's face and replied, Well, then, your highness, open your eyes wide and see clearly. After that, the fire was lit, the hot air balloon gradually inflated, and it ascended high into the sky. Everyone especially the crown prince, was incredibly amazed. Oh, it really has flown up. It's truly magical. The crown prince's love for excitement was ingrained in his blood, and he put his arm around the young man, Shi Ba, whispering, Shi Ba, take me up to the sky. Fang Jiwua then told Shai Ba, tell his royal highness why you have that scar on your head. Shai Ba took off the bandage and said, a long time ago, I fell from the sky to the ground. Fortunately, Heaven favored me, and I was only scratched by a branch while hanging on a tree. The details of the story must return to a short while before. When the hot air balloon was still flying in the sky, Mr. Zula was drenched in sweat, from his armpits to his groan. He anxiously said, We are about to fly back to the capital palace. How can we bring this thing down now? 